Kia ora and welcome to the Aotearoa Rugby Pod. Wow, it was an All Blacks team. A few surprises and plenty to get into this week. We're going to have a good look at the bolters like Dallas McLeod, what he does well statistically. Why is he in this team? Some of the guys who missed out, Hoskin Satutu, not even in the top 60 players in the country now, which is quite amazing, and everybody else as well. So stick with us over the next hour. Plenty to discuss. Of course, there's a Super Rugby final to come as well. Don't have to forget about that. And uh, we've got a man back to help us chat through that. But before we get to him, James Parsons, how are you? Oh, uh... Well, there's a few few glaring um, surprises for me. Obviously, a couple of friends missing the cut, but um, outside of that, you know, probably Dallas McLeod's the biggest biggest surprise. But the other positions, you knew it was going to be a tight tough tussle for those sorts of players in and out. Yeah, yeah, plenty to discuss there. And joining us after a beautiful holiday all around Europe and a rugby game in the middle, out of Dubai, Bryn Hall. Thank you for joining us once again. Crusaders beat the Blues. You had to be back, didn't you? Uh, boys, it's good to be back. No, I thought um, it'd be a great time just to jump on for me, old mate. He's obviously hurting a little bit. But, um, yeah, we'll dive into that. Uh, to be honest, probably the best half of foot I've ever seen the Crusaders play, I think, clinically and uh, ruthlessly. They were um, they were on swung in that first half. But, yeah, Dallas McLeod, wow, what a bolter. I can't um, you know, obviously play with him play with, with him a lot. I think the last bolts you have to go back to maybe is Isaiah Tuiava that was, that was announced just – that nobody thought was coming. So really stoked for him and his growth, but um, you look forward to going a little bit deeper with that All Black squad as well. Let's start with Dallas McLeod, really. And Bryn, I'd love to get you more of your input. You know, Ian Foster likes his speed, he likes his attitude, he likes his kick chase, he likes his versatility. Have you seen all of those things in him? What do you like about this guy? He's, he's had a massive improvement compared to last year, I think. You know, he was struggling to, I guess, have a contract with the Crusaders, even with Mighty Team Cup as well, being held off to not to not be able to be selected within that team. But then, you know, you look at 12 months and I guess the work that he's done has been great. And I think, you know, he's, he's a great ball carrier, been a great defender on the wing as well. I think if you look in, um, in the semi-finals, um, decision making on the wing and being able to make tackles um, on the edge is going to be really important. And um, he's did a, did a great job against Caleb Clark, who, you know, you'd have to say arguably is one of the greater um, ball carriers in the world. So, um, and he works hard off the ball. Um, so, He's done a lot of good things well, but I think the improvements that we've seen in the 12 months, um, I think if he would have told you at the start of the year that he would have been in the All Black squad, um, he would have laughed at me. I think it is a, a game like he had against the Blues at Eden Park that's probably got him the, the nod for that midfield spot um, because he's played a lot on the wing this season. Um, so, you know, he does have that versatility, but uh, obviously Enor as well. Uh, McLeod and Enor in the MPC for Canterbury have formed quite a combination. They're, they're really destructive. They're great at bringing their blindside wingers into games. Um, they're good defensively. So, you know, potentially Enor going really well and, and being in and around that midfield and then obviously a lot of injuries in and around the midfield. It, it's created an opportunity which, um, yeah, it might be a bolter, but I suppose that's the beauty is, you know, maybe the expectation won't be as high as normal with black debutants and, and he can sort of relieve himself of that pressure and, and rip into it. I think back about people who, you know, came in and maybe aren't the flashy guys, aren't the guys with the big reputation, aren't the guys who everyone's saying is going to be an All Black, and then they become very good All Blacks. People like Conrad Smith, I mean, that's a big comparison to make, but he's a guy who was a bit of an unfashionable-looking player, but was very effective at test level. Could we see a similar kind of approach from a Dallas McLeod? Potentially, but I do think that uh, midfield partnership is key. You, you actually do need, um, you know, it was Ma'a and Conrad, do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it's a, he can't sort of rely on himself as an individual. Um, but I suppose the one thing I'm interested from Bryn's point of view is, you know, there has been a lot of heat on Roger in and around the ability to kick. Mm -hmm. We know the All Blacks, you know, through Harvelli and, and Geordie Barrett, you know, want to use their 12 to kick. Is that part of his game? Have you seen that at training, Bryn? Yeah, I think he has. Um, he showed he showed glimpses of it. I think it, it might have seen a couple level bunnies in peace, sorry, and even um, a little bit in the in the Crusaders um, this year. But I think it definitely is a part of his game that he's able to do it. Um, you probably haven't seen it a lot because I think you look at the Crusaders set up they. Um, with David Havili coming back and Jack Kudyu at the number 12, they've slotted him on the wing. And so that kicking game and 12 that you're talking about, Jip, hasn't probably seen a lot in the back end of the Super Rugby comp, but it definitely is within his skill set. He can probably do it off both feet as well with the time that we've had. But um, yeah, again, just probably hasn't had the opportunities with Jack being there at 12 at the moment and with David Havili being out. As a 12, line running is very important. Oh, he's, 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 he's very good at that. He, he's, um, you know, between, you know, 
himself and, and probably Bryce Heem, uh, when they've played in that 12 position, they've made probably the most damage. Um, mm. So in terms of getting off the game, like if we use the game against the Blues at Eden Park, he was a, probably the difference really yep. in them getting away with that one. When the Blues had a lot of position, we, we know they had a lot of 22 metre entries um, and the Crusaders once again made a lot of tackles and, and you know that's what makes them a championship winning team. But in terms of the attacking side of the ball, he was, he was massive. Sean Stevenson, obviously the form player of Super Rugby. Look, it's tough, I think. Um, yeah, I think if you're looking on the attacking side of the game, um, you know, scoring scores tries, has a great kicking game and um, has been able to really, um, I guess, influence games with his attacking priorities. But I think, you know, probably the one work on that, that well, that Fozzie's talked about is his defence. Now, I think it's been an area that he's really, really improved on. Now, you'll probably touch on the stats around what that might look like, but, you know, I think it's an improvement in his game that he's um, that he's really had. And so... Um, it's tough. It'd be a really tough conversation to have a shooter because, um, you know, the improvements that he's made, you know, they must just see him as, as a fullback, as not as a winger option because um, that's probably the only one area that you can think possibly that he might not get selected. Um, and even then, it's probably it's thinking like he might be hard done by because, I mean, he's done pretty well in, in that area. I think it's been a massive improvement in his game and you probably leave it to jip around the stats around what that's needed. But yeah, a real tough one for shooter. It's good that he is going as injury cover with obviously Mark Talia being been there, been a bit of a kick in the guts, I think. Um, still being able to head over there, not based on your, sele um, your selection merits, but yeah, I think it's a tough one for sure, but he'll go back to the drawing board and hopefully his defensive um, game can get a little bit better that Fozzie's touched on. How he goes into the environment will be critical though. You know, like he's got, that's quite, you know, you don't make the squad, but then you've got an opportunity to impress the coaches and, you know, so many players have made, uh, I suppose, their test match careers in those weeks before they actually get a game is what they do and, and I suppose their attitude to it. So, you know, like Sean's just got better and better every year he's had and, and you know, he's got a great opportunity to go in there and change it. And I don't think they're big shifts. They, they obviously are in, in their head around international rugby, but I don't, I don't think we saw too many um, frailties in that game that he played for the Maldives and, and then obviously All Blacks 15 on the India tour. And, um, you know, so, and if you look at him from NPC, like he was really physical in his collisions out the back and, and the work he was doing in the backfield to make those tackles. I think it's been the same this season. Um, and, you know, and a lot of the time he's on the edge because you know Damien does drop back into that backfield. But I, I went through and looked at the, the stats and he's tackling at 80% for the season, but he's played more minutes than most that you know, I could compare him against. So you've got Tom Wright, who was the closest in terms of minutes. Um, he was 71%, and Tom Rice had a pretty good year, and you wouldn't say he's, he's a passive defender. Uh, Will Jordan's a point of difference. He has only played just over 300 minutes, though, um, so less opportunity to miss tackles or make them. Um, he's tackling 89%, so that is quite strong. Mm. Especially for, for, for the position he is in that backfield, it is quite hard to make those tackles. Zahn Sullivan's at 79%, Josh Morby's at 74%, and I just thought Max Jorgensen, you know, a lot of talk about him and his season and, and how he played, he's at 78%. So um, it's not drastic, is really what I'm trying to point out. Yeah, he'd want to be a little bit higher, um, but I think some of his defensive work, especially covering the backfield, um, you know, will be key. Maybe they've looked at the last few weeks, you know, the Reds got a number of 50-22, so they did manipulate that, that pendulum quite well. Um, so maybe that was part of it. I'm not too sure, but I do think, you know, stats is one thing. I can read out every stat on every player and why they should be, shouldn't be selected, but I have noted here that the performance of the last two weeks, I think, has counted for a hell of a lot. Mm. I, I really do, I, and I think that's shown in the selection because mainly the guys that have got the nod have performed. I suppose when you looked at that squad, and we've talked about this at length, the options that they have at fullback, whether it's Will Jordan, whether it's Geordie Barrett, whether it's Bowden Barrett or Damien McKenzie, they are flush with fullback. So if they do not see him as a winger, then, you know, I, <sighs> To me, Man. it feels like they're reaching. They're reaching for a reason not to, to pick him. They just need to say, well, we're well served. Yeah, we've got well, five full sorry. Backs. We're all right, right? But he's a great winger. Like, when he's played at that All Blacks 15 level or Māori ABs, he's been a winger. Like, he, has, he is a proven winger, in my opinion. Mm. And we've seen at the international level. If you're Bryn to talk about the fact, the physical nature, well, when he's played for New Zealand Māori, at what is really a test level, 
he hasn't had a problem, has he? Man, there's no more real, I guess, opportunities other than being an All Black to play at the international level to try and prove yourself because he's done it at multi level. He did it at the All Black 15 level. Um, but I guess, I guess, you know, the selectors have told him this is this is an area that we need you to work on. And you know, knowing Shooter, um, he'll want to work on his game. And if he can get that right or show the improvements that I guess he's been given some messages around what it's going to look like. If he can do that, then look, um, it's only going to be better for him moving forward. But yeah, he's he's proven it at an international level. So yeah, it's a tough one. One of the things that Ian Foster talked about was how there were certain players who played themselves out of the All Blacks on the weekend. And you can't help but wonder whether Hoskins, Satutu and Akira Ioane were two of those guys. Hoskins obviously missing out on, on the All Blacks 15 as well. And, and look, it's actually no crack at anyone that made the All Blacks 15, but it, that is quite a drop. Mm. Um, to be in the All Blacks and then fall right out of favour. And if you actually, you know, we, we wax lyrical, including Mr Crusader Man, about how he had, he had put on a bit of size and, you know, he was being real dominant. And I, I went through his stats and compared them to sort of the other eights and he leads it, you know, including, you know, only one that Artie beats him in is, is tackle percentage and, and that turnover. So, uh, you know, he, he's you know, sort of 20 or 30 metres uh, more post-contact metres, 20 or 30 metres more metres when he's in the carry. Similar sort of number of carries in the game. Um, but he just, uh, he must have maybe run out of steam because he, his form, like, his form is great. And as I said, those stats are only half of the story. And that's why I think the last two weeks, the, the quarterfinal and the, and the semi have, have played a big part in the selections around this. And they know they're going to need bodies that are fresh to win collisions up front. We know that's what Jace Ryan likes, and he's got certain players he knows uh, what he can get out of, and, and he's, he's gone for that. So if stats are half yeah. the story, Bryn, what's the rest of the story on Hoskins to Tutu not making the squad, do you think? There's been some guys that have been playing some fantastic footy in this position. You've got to think about Jacobson. You know, you obviously love him, um, Ross, but, you know, his form that he's had, and I guess what he does, along with Finau, I think, as well, when they go into their breakdowns, they do not miss when they go into those breakdowns. And so you have, they've got a pretty clear message, I think, around the selection of that loose war trio and knowing what, I guess, you think of the South Africans and I guess in the rugby World Cup stage, what we're going to need in that area. And I think, you know, those two players, especially when it comes to the breakdown work, they're pretty pretty clinical and they're very good around um, winning collisions. So um, whether they thought that Hoss wasn't able to do that, um, I'm not too sure, but those two players, alongside with having their own attacking ability and defensive work, but when it comes to the breakdown, those two boys, along with Kane, you know, you look at Artie, Papali'i, Frizzell, he can do that as well. You're starting to look at a real mix of that loose four trail around what it's going to look like at the Rugby World Cup, I think, when it comes to the collision areas and what we're going to need from our from our loose forwards. And, and I think the stats back that up because uh, Sam Penny Fee now leads the post contact metres uh, on average per per, and then just behind him by point two is, is Luke Jacobson. So those the big tackles and I you know we spoke about Luke Jacobson man he's got those sharp shoulders back that mm. you know originally got him. Yep. Um, selected and, and I just think Sammy Penny Finau was just too good to ignore. Not only was he good in the tight, but man, when he hold, holds his width and he and you know he seems really disciplined to play his role in their attack structure, especially phase play. And he, he made some great inroads um, down the right flanks a number of times this season. So um, you know both boys are tackling at, at 91%. Um, you know that they are worthy of being selected. Brent, I'm really keen for your take on the halfbacks. You know, Brad Weber, I thought many would have thought that he was almost a shoe in for one of the three spots. He's not there. You know, based on performances, you know, Cam Roygaard deserves to be there. And I guess the one bad thing about Brad being in that environment um, and Cam not being in there, it's get, you need to get Cam in there to see if he can play, um, especially at the Rugby Championship. And then can they take him to the World Cup? But they also know that Brad Weber, if they need him, he'll be ready to go for that World Cup selection. So it's all not gone for Brad. I think, um, you know, Cam Ruiga, they're going to get him in there, give him an opportunity, and he deserves his performance with the, with the Hurricanes. He played very, very well, and his base on his, on his game, um, he deserves to be there. But I think for Brad, um, like he's shown a lot in his career, the resilience that he's shown, he hasn't been selected for squads, but then he finds his way through injury or a lack of form from certain players, he's back in that environment. So... You know, New Zealand rugby are very lucky in that sense. I think Fozzie knows that, um, knowing what they can get with Brad, um, giving Cam an opportunity. If it doesn't work out, you can always go back to the tried and true with Brad when it comes to World Cup time, especially when it comes to experience. But um, 
not surprised with Cam's performances. And I think Finlay Christie has probably been the best player in that blue side for the year. Um, and it's coming back next year as well. He's signed with New Zealand rugby. And I'm not too sure if that goes into the thinking with Brad Weber leaving next year. Uh, but I just think with Cam's performances and I think knowing what Brad can do, um, he's still in their back pocket for Fozzie if, if things do go a little bit south in their halfback department. Yeah, and I think you've got to look at history and the way they've selected, this coaching group selected um, the nines, and you'd have to think they always like that bigger nine, that different mm. nine as their third halfback so that they have that variation in their game and the ability to change um, in, in test matches. So... Uh, you know, you, you were thinking they would head in that direction, but I think one thing that sealed it was Roy Gard's performance um, against the Brumbies in Canberra. He was huge. You know, he was he was a big part of you know sort of keeping them in that game and giving them a chance. And um, you know, his form pr prior to that was key. But I think that game. I know I keep labouring the point, but I think these finals. You know, and the All Black selectors had said. We want to know who's going to front up at the business end because that's the, you know there's a level of intensity above that that they're going into mm -hmm. and we need to know that you can cope with that sort of pressure. I am interested in the Brad Weber scenario based on what you're saying, Bryn, about you know they already know him and I've I've heard something similar that 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 is part of their thinking. As a player, how do you take that? You know, like you to to be told, let's say you're told we want to see this other bloke in the environment. We know what you can do. Go over and play footy over there. You want to be an All Black. You want that jersey, you want that squad, and you certainly don't want to give that other bloke a chance. So it must be hard to hear yep. a piece of news like that. Yes, yes, Ross. <laughs> I can imagine it is tough, but there's nothing you can do about it. You know, um, it's all you, all you can do, really. Um, and I guess, again, this is why I have such respect for Brad, because the amount of resilience that he's had to show in his career around having those tough phone calls and then being able to say, you know what, I'm going to take this disappointment and I'm only going to control what I can control. And that's been able to play for the All Black 15, or he's played for Wycott, or he's played for the, the Hawks Bay. He's just gone back and done what he's needed to do and controlling what he can control. So, yeah, look, I think, you know, based on his resume and how he's played, um, it's always tough to have that conversation. But, you know, like I said, uh, when it comes to Brad Weber, do not, um, do not sleep on him because he'll go back to wherever he plays, All Black 15, Bunnings and PST, and he'll play some good footy. He'll be one of the best players on the field, and it comes back to his character. And again, um, if things don't go well, um, like I said before, the, the coaching staff are, are real lucky in that sense that they'll know Brad will um, perform well at wherever he does play. And then if he does, if there's an injury or they're not liking how some guys are going, they'll give him, um, they'll give him another opportunity. But to answer your question, Ross, it's tough. Hey, who wins? I think the Chiefs. Yeah, uh, it would be, it would be, um, yeah, I just think it'll be a big ask and, and you know, these All Black boys with World Cup, they, they do need a front in this game. Like, I, I can't emphasise enough how I think the last two weeks and this final will, will be in the selectors' mind leading to these big tests. Bryn? I'll go for the Crusaders. I think if they can get Sam Whitelock back, I think, I'm not too sure what his selection is going to be. I think he's going to be a, a massive um, cog in that wheel if they can get him back. But at the same time, if they don't, Quinton Strain's been doing unbelievable work and has obviously been in the All Black 15 and been able to great to see great to see him not getting injured. But um, yeah, I just can't imagine, I can't imagine them Losing, I think, with Razor going. Where is it going to be won? Like, what's what what's telling you that confidently? That because you seem pretty adamant that that's going to happen, or is it just you know you're just being as bad as I am when the Blues uh, are playing someone? I think you're trying. I could be on the Chiefs board here, but um, Mate, no, you're not look, playing I just for think, them. The Chiefs aren't listening to you. <laughs> I think it's very. I think it's very similar to last year. I look. I look at the Blues last year, right? So they were the form team going into, into last year. I think that their way that they played in the quarterfinals and the semifinals football was a little bit similar to the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs have won. They've got the job done, which is great. But you look at the, the way that the Crusaders have built, obviously they played very well against them in draw. But then the consistency that they played against the Blues, they are peaking at a final, coming to a final. Whereas I don't think the Chiefs are peaking. They haven't peaked to where I think the where the Crusaders are. So with that and knowing being a part of that group, I think I can say that I think the Crusaders will win. But I, like Fantastic I say, answer, I'm not Brent. <laughs> Fantastic. You sold me. You sold me. 
You actually sold me. I thought you were just talking rubbish, but no, that's, that's, you've got a lot of relevant points there. It's a very, very fair argument, and we'll look forward to this weekend to see whether or not that one comes It's just true. good to see him under pressure for once, because every time it's like Blues Chiefs or Blues Crusaders, I'm like, yeah, I think yeah. the Blues are going to win, and, and you guys currently hot. It's just good to see you in the hot seat. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Mate, it was like he was clearing you out at the ruck, mate. You <laughs> had the ball on the side. You know, there's an untouchable halfback with his hands yeah. on the ball. And mate, it was just because through. he'd spoken all, all show about how good the Chiefs were. And yeah. then he was just like, oh, yeah, no, there's no doubt the Crusaders are going to win. I'm like, what? Hold on a minute. That's <laughs> not what I've heard for the last 50 minutes. <laughs> Peaking at the right time sold me. They are. They are. Yep. They, they, I can't argue with that, man. They, the last two weeks have just been ridiculously mm. clinical. Yeah. They built nicely, especially when you consider the fact that the Blues, what, they'd only lost one game in nine weeks or something. They'd only, they were the best team in the second half. They'd only yep. averaged seven points in the second half the whole season. Yeah. The Blues, defensively. Yeah. Their biggest, we said it last week, the Blues needed to stop the Crusaders' hot start, otherwise it was going to be a tough. They didn't do that. Mm. But the way the Crusaders continued on in the second 40 mm. was really impressive. Yeah, all, th all of the teams that were in the finals, you know, showed pretty elite defence at some point during the competition. Maybe the Brumbies didn't until that, until that semi-final, and then they were, mm. geez, they were good on defence. But the Blues, breaking down that Blues defence was... Was their superpower. Yeah. But it just went, yeah. But I do think it was off the back yeah. of the Crusaders' defence, if you know yes. what I mean. It's, yes. it's, it's, but I've said all that yeah. after the last 50, so I don't need to hear that again. <laughs> OK. Chiefs, Crusaders, let's see what happens on Saturday. It's going to be an absolute rip snorter. We will see you again next week. James Parsons, thank you very much. You, Bryn Hall, great to see you again. Love the analysis. We'll see what happens. <laughs> be back, boys. Good to see you. forward to it. <laughs> Absolutely. And thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you again next week on the Aotearoa Rugby Pod. If you want to get in contact, leave a comment on YouTube or send us an email, Aotearoa Rugby Pod at sky.co.nz. We'll see you next week. Next week's show will also include a bloke called Liam Island, who is the winner of our tipping comp. 23 year old master's student, studies frogs. Um, interesting bloke. And rugby, by Very the good at tipping. <laughs> and rugby. He's very good on rugby. So we'll include him next week as well. Get the uh, the oil on how these things. Well, we should have asked him for his tip for this week, actually. To be probably, fair. I think he went with the chief. He would have got it right. Yeah, yeah. So thank you very much. We'll see you again next week. Matewa.